Hello there, Lightmatica is an epic Minecraft Java client mod, but it's pretty technical, so I'm going to share some tips and tricks that I've picked up to make things a little easier. No waffle, keeping it simple, short and concise. Now quick disclaimer, this isn't a guide on how to download and install Lightmatica, please check out the video links that I've put in the description. Once you've done that, return here and I'll show you how to select, copy and paste, lock, rotate, flip, Automate. Analyze. Change blocks in bulk. Delete things in bulk. Edit by hand. Build super fast. And more? Possibly. Let's go. First press M and go to configuration menu. Then go over to hotkeys. These are the key binds that I have selected and I recommend this layout for ease of use. Everything else is just left at default. It's totally up to you if you want to use the same keys as I've selected. You don't have to but I do strongly recommend that you do. Okay, let's assume you've downloaded Lightmatica, you've installed Lightmatica, you've checked that it works, you have all of the hotkeys set to whatever you want them set as. It's your first time using it and it's a brand new, fresh install. We are ready to begin and you can see that I am in survival mode. That is because you can use Lightmatica in survival or creative mode. But to use Lightmatica at all, you always need to have your trusty stick in your main hand. And you can see a little dialog box has come up in the bottom left corner that says corner mode corners, mode one out of nine. And if I let go of the stick, nothing. We're just back in the normal game again. So you need to hold the stick in order to use Lightmatica in the first place. So mode one out of nine, there's nine different modes that you can use in Lightmatica, but there's only three available in survival. And that is area selection, schematic placement, and edit schematic. And to change these, you hold down the left control button on your keyboard and you use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll to the other modes. We want to be in mode one because this is the mode where you will make a box. And what the box is going to do is select exactly the area that you want to save as a schematic. So how do we do that? To create a selection box, make sure you're in mode one out of nine area selection and holding a stick, press M on your keyboard and it will bring this menu up, then go to Area Selection Browser, click on it, then go to New Selection, click on it, and then come up with a name for whatever you want to highlight. So in this instance, I'm going to highlight a wall. So I'm just going to name it Wall and hit OK. And now we're ready to select something. So press the Escape key a couple of times to get out of the menus. And you can see we have this weird little box in front of us. And now that we have this weird little box in front of us, we can use the right click and the left click of our mouse to kind of manipulate the box and select corners. So I can select one corner with the right click here, select the other corner with the left click, and that is how you highlight something. But wait, you can see it hasn't highlighted this back area here. And if I click a block that's just got air in it, nothing happens. I can only select something that's on a solid block so I'm going to have to manually manipulate this somehow. Let me show you how to do that. So by holding the Alt key down and scrolling with the scroll wheel of your mouse, if I scroll back towards me, the box comes towards me. If I scroll away from me, the box goes away from me. And if you look up and down, it does the same thing. So if I look up and scroll, it'll scroll up and it'll scroll down. So that's it, I've moved this red corner, but let's say I wanna move this corner instead. Well, to move this corner over here, or the blue corner, all you need to do is middle click the scroll wheel of your mouse on this corner, and it will select that corner for you. So then you can do exactly the same thing. So forward and back, or side to side, like that. Or if I'm looking up, I can move it up and down. And it also works if you're looking down. So if I stand here, look down, hold Alt, and scroll forward, the box will go down. So. We have selected the area that we want to select. And now I'll show you how to save this as a schematic. So to do that, press M, go to Area Editor, and hit Save Schematic. And then you can name it whatever you want to name it in this box up here. So I'll call it Wall 1. Now you can see I already have loads and loads of schematics here. And I even have folders that have schematics in them. But we're not going to worry about those for now. We're going to call this wall one and hit save schematic. And now if I scroll down, you will see that wall one is here in my schematics. So it has saved the schematic. I can take it to any world that I ever want to do. I can load it at any time at all. So how do you load a schematic up? You press M, you go to load schematics, go down to the one that you want to choose. So wall one and then hit load schematic. 
and it has loaded the schematic. So here it is in front of us. So that's how to save and load a schematic. But for now, I'm going to unload this schematic and get on with the rest of what you can do with this. Now, that was one way of saving your schematic. Another way is to just hit the save hotkey, whatever you have that set as. I have mine as three on the number pad. So if I press the number three, it takes me straight to this page and then I can just name it whatever I want to call it and hit save schematic. So that's a much quicker way of saving a schematic. What if I want to get rid of this selection box because it's ugly and I don't need it anymore? Well, to do that, you just hit whatever the hotkey is to close your selection box. And mine is number two on the number pad. But let's say I hit the number two by accident. Ah, no, what do I do? I want the box back. Give me the box. Well, to do that, you just hit the create selection box key. And mine is number one on the keypad. So I can create a box, move the box around, and then delete it. So press one to create a box, move it around, delete it, pressing key two. Or I can create a box, highlight an area, and press key three, and save it as a schematic. So that's one, two, and three. So now I'm going to show you how to load a schematic, twist it, turn it, flip it, do whatever you like with it. So to open a schematic, you go to M, then you go to load schematics, choose the schematic that we saved. So mine was wall one, load schematic, and it has actually loaded the schematic. Okay, I've loaded the schematic and I can't move it around. Now, why is that? The reason is you need to go from mode one, area selection, to mode 2, schematic placement. Then you can move it around wherever you want to move it just by clicking. And you can use the left click or the right click. And it will do that for you. So now you're probably wondering how do I rotate it? Well if you go to the schematic placement hotkey, mine is a tiny little minus key on the number pad. So I press that and it shows that we have the wall schematic open. If I go over here I can move it to me or I can rotate it. So that's clockwise 90 degrees, clockwise 180, and so on and so forth. You can also mirror it. So it can be front and back or left and right. So that's how to flip it and move it around. But to move it up and down, you just do exactly what you did with the area selection tool. So if you hold the alt and scroll wheel, you can move it back and forth, left and right, up and down. And it's as easy as that. Just remember in the future that if you want to do any of what I just did with the schematic like this, you have to be in mode 2 out of 9 schematic placement. If you're in mode 1 area selection, you'll see it's not doing anything and I can't move it around. So always make sure that you're in the right mode. That is how to move the schematic around. But if you want to paste it as a build into the actual world, you can't do that unless you're in creative mode. So let's go into creative mode, game mode creative. Now that I'm in creative mode, if I hold down control, I can go to mode 5. And mode 5 is to paste schematic in world. So once I've selected exactly where I want the schematic to be, so I've rotated it or mirrored it or whatever, I've got it exactly where I want it to be. To actually copy and then paste it into the world, you have to hit the execute operation key. In other words, the do it key. And for me, that is zero on my number pad. If I press zero on my number pad, the do it key, it then pastes it into the world. And the schematic is still open and we can still move it around. So I could paste another one, then I could paste another one, then I could paste another one. That is how awesome Light Matica is. Just remember that that can only be done in creative. You cannot do that in survival. And always be careful when you're on a server. Just make sure you know what you're doing. Anyway, you now know how to select an area, save a schematic, load a schematic, place a schematic, paste a schematic. But you want to know how to build it in survival. And I'm going to show you how to build it from the ground up. So first of all, we'll load a schematic. Make sure you're in mode 2 out of 9, that's schematic placement. Remember to change it. You just hold the control button down and use your scroll wheel and go to schematic placement. So to load a schematic, we can hit M, go to load schematics. Open the schematic that we want. I'm opening this again. So load schematic. And it's placed the schematic. We'll put the schematic where we want it. So we'll click here. I don't know, rotate it. Let's say that's the exact place that we want it in the world. If we want to build this layer by layer, you're going to have to change the layer mode. And to change the layer mode, I've set my hotkeys to the left and right key. So if I hit the right key, 
it will say single layer and you can see it's highlighted a single layer we can then use the up and down key to go up and down layers so you can change it to layer range which is a bit weird and i won't really show how to use that all below so that's everything below a certain y level or all above so anything above a certain y level or just all which is just the generic standard layer mode that you're likely to use but yeah single layer is probably more useful if you want to change the block render state from opaque to translucent there is a hotkey to do that and i set my hotkey for doing that as seven on the keypad so i press number seven and that's now made this hollow and translucent and to toggle it back you just press seven again and it's then opaque so in survival you would place down all of these blocks and then go up the next layer by pressing the up key build all of those blocks then press the up key again and build all of those blocks so you can do it from the ground up or the top down and then after you're done if you remember you can put it back to all again just by pressing the left and right key and if you ever want to just close a schematic quickly you just press the hot key for it so my key for doing that is number six on the keypad so again we can load a schematic uh where is it there it is wall number one load schematic uh put it exactly where we want to put it and then to unload it we just press number six or whatever the unload schematic key is so for me it's number six on the number pad okay so everything that we just did is really cool but let's do something useful now if we create an area so We've got a selection area open, we've got a box in front of us, we move the box and highlight the build. Let's say I want to know exactly how many of what block are in this build. So to do that, you can highlight the area, press 4, which is the essentially the copy key, and then 5, which is essentially the paste key. We then have the schematic up in front of us. So if I go to schematic placement and move it to over here, if I press J, it will then analyse exactly how many of each block are in the build. So it shows me that there are 67 cobblestone in the build. And it says missing until you fill them in in survival. And then once you filled them all in, it will say missing zero. My hotkey for that is J. So whenever I hit J, it opens up the material list. That can also be done with a schematic. So if I load a schematic up... Let's load up something really random. So eeny meeny miny 3x3 redstone door. There we go. That's the one that was on Mumbo's channel uh, back in the day. I mean, it's still there. It's a really cool door. Go and check it out. But yeah, now that I have that loaded up, if I hit J, it will show me exactly what I need to put into that build or exactly how many of each item I need. Gives you the full material list. How awesome is that? Once again, we can unload schematics by pressing whatever the hotkey is. For me, it's hotkey 6. And yeah, I can select this by middle clicking it and then hit 6 again to close that. I can also close this area selection box by middle clicking it and pressing 2 to get rid of the selection box. But wait, there is more. There is another really awesome thing that you can do with Lightmatica. So if you hit J to open this up and then go on Info HUD and turn it on, you then get a list in the bottom right corner that shows you exactly what you need. And when you give yourself that, so if I give Mr. Bazooki Observer 10, you'll see it then gets deleted from the material list so I can then move on to whatever the next thing is. So in this case, it's a sticky piston and I need 10 of them. So you can run around all of your chests in survival, picking up the items and they will get ticked down on a material list until you have them all. And then you're ready to build whatever it is you want to build. And if you want to close it again, you can hit J or whatever the hotkey is. And then click info hood off. And that closes it again. There's something else really important that I didn't mention that I really do need to mention. And that's when you load up a schematic, you can sometimes accidentally move it. But to stop that happening, you can actually lock a schematic in place. So let's load a schematic. Let's load up the door and place it just here. Now, if I want to lock this in place, I can hit the minus key on my number pad to open up this menu. And then where it says locked up here, put on. Now, if I spam around, it will say this placement is locked and cannot be modified. So make sure you do that before you place a schematic 
to avoid kind of spamming it all over the world. You do not want that to happen. But it can only happen if you have the stick in your hand anyway. But it has happened to me a few times, and it is very annoying when it does happen. So always lock your schematics. By this stage, you're probably thinking, okay, I think that's everything I need to know about Lightmatica. I might as well just close the video and get on with whatever I want to do. But no, don't leave yet. I have some really, really cool tips. And also, if you're enjoying the video, please subscribe. But let's get on with it. You might be wondering, once I've placed a schematic down, is there a way that I can actually edit the schematic itself? Not the build that I'm building, but the actual schematic? So if you go and load a schematic up, so I'll open, uh, I don't know, Il Mango's Gold Farm, why not? Pretty big. Um, yeah, if I open this, but let's say I want to change the magma blocks for some reason or another. Well, you can go to, you can go to mode 9 by holding down the control button and the scroll wheel. So you go to mode 9, which is edit schematic. Now you can actually punch out and place blocks like this in the schematic. So, I don't know, let's put some netherite blocks there, because that's cool. Yeah, so you can change the schematic like that. But let's say you want to change all of these blocks, so all of the magma blocks, to another specific block type. Well, to do that, you're going to have to go to the configuration menu and change one of the hotkeys. The hotkey that you're going to change is schematic, rebuild, replace all, and set it to something. I'm going to set mine to the letter K, because I don't know. But now that I've done that, if I hold down K while in edit schematic, you'll see that it lights up whichever block I'm looking at. Now that's asking if you want to change all of the blocks of that type to something. And because I'm holding a netherite block, if I then right click on the magma block, it changes all of them to netherite blocks. So only the block of that specific type but it will change them all in one go, just like that. And that's really handy if you've, for example, built a house or built a schematic of a house and saved the schematic, but you decide halfway through building it, mm, I'd actually like to change out this one block for another block. Well, you can do it by doing that. So all you have to do is just be on edit schematic mode 9, hold whatever block you want to change it to, press whatever the key is and boom just click it. So that's how we can replace all of the blocks in a schematic, but what if you want to replace all of the blocks in a build that is already built? Well I'm going to paste this into the world, so I'm in paste schematic in world, pasting this schematic, and once it is all pasted it will say command block feedback set to true, which it does. So we now have this big building in front of us. I want to change all of the terracotta blocks to brick blocks. How am I going to do that? Well, first of all, unload your schematic. So there is no schematic around this. I'm going to create a new selection area. So we're going to go to area selection browser. Get rid of this one because we're not using it. Create a new selection. Let's put mansion. Press OK. We now have a little box in front of us. If I right click this corner, uh, left click the other farthest corner that I can, which will be up here, and then I'm going to have to do some manipulation, so I'm going to drag it towards me by holding down alt and scrolling towards me. That is now all selected. Now I have this big area selection box around it, I can now change all of the blocks without having to create a schematic or change a schematic. So to do that you go to mode 4, which is replace block. So, to change the block that you want to change, first of all, you need to hold the stick in your hand, hold down shift and middle click, and now it says replace terracotta, but it says block magma block, so it will replace all of the terracotta blocks with magma blocks right now. We don't want that, we want to replace them with bricks. So to change the block that you want to change all of the terracotta to, we are going to hold alt and middle click on the bricks. So now it says replace terracotta, block, bricks. All you need to do now is just press the do it key. So if I press zero, it has now changed all of the terracotta to bricks. And I didn't even have to make a schematic. So we've done how to change the blocks in a build. Now we're going to look at how to fill in an area using Lightmatica. And you can fill in massive areas with Lightmatica with any block that you want, even if it's a bigger area than 52,000 blocks. So if I go back to area selection mode one and create a box 
let's just create a box here. So we now have an area selection box. If I now hold control and go to mode three, fill. So I can now fill in this box. But how do I choose the material that I want to fill the box in with? Well, you just look at the material that you want to fill it in with. So let's assume it's a grass block. Hold alt and middle click. And it now says block grass block. So now all I have to do is hit the do it key, which is key zero on my number pad. And boom, it fills it all in. Poor cow. It didn't die though, so that's all right. But there we go. Yeah, that's how you fill in areas. So I can just keep doing this. I can just keep pressing zero uh, and keep scrolling towards me, whatever. Make blocks anywhere. Go on, just press zero and just keep moving the blocks around and press zero. And it just fills in entire areas with blocks. And now if you want to delete all of these blocks, there's two ways. You can either alt middle click the air to select air and then press zero and it will fill in the blocks with air. So I'll select that corner over there. Mm, there we go. I think that just about got it. Yep, that got it. So if I press zero now, it will just replace everything with air. But there is also another way. You can hold control and scroll and go to mode eight, which is delete. And you can use the box in the exact same way and press zero in the exact same way and it will delete them. But you can delete and fill in massive areas. You just have to be really careful because it can crash your PC. Or if it doesn't crash your PC, it will crash your game. Or it could just kick you from a server. And you might also crash the server if you do have ops. So please don't fill in massive, massive areas. So even if you have creative or ops, don't go around filling in massive areas with blocks. Uh, and definitely know your limits. Maybe you've got some schematics open and you don't want them to actually show in the world. For example, you're taking a recording or you're streaming or something and you don't want people to know that you're using Lightmatica. Well, you can completely just hide everything by pressing the hotkey that hides everything. And in my instance, that is nine on my number pad. So if I press the number nine, toggled all rendering off. So then you can just pretend you don't even have Lightmatica. But as soon as you press the nine key again on the number pad, it all comes back again. You can also hide what's in the box by pressing key number eight. And there is a hot key for doing that as well. All right, now I'm going to show you something that is extremely OP absolutely awesome and i only found out probably a couple of days before recording this but you're going to wonder how on earth am i doing this it's just placing all of the blocks without me needing to do anything except hold right click and fly around and look at the blocks how on earth is it doing that well it can be done in creative and it can also technically be done in survival but if you press m go to configuration menu then go to generic and then go to easy place first change this to false what this setting easy place first does is allows you to place the back blocks first before the blocks that are closest to the player so it essentially allows you to place in rows at super fast speed but then the next setting you need to change is easy place mode you need to set this to true and what it does is it selects the exact block that you need to place into the schematic and it places it for you from your main hand. But in survival, it will only place the block if you actually have it in your inventory. But it doesn't matter if it's in your inventory or your hotbar, it will start placing that block as long as you have it. And if you scroll down, there is another setting called placement restriction, which you may need to enable. And what that does is it stops you from placing the wrong block into the schematic or in the wrong location. Now that can be useful and annoying depending on what you're trying to use it for. But I normally keep this set to false. So just keep it to false for now. And then if you're looking at your schematic and you hold down right click, it will just start filling in the blocks for you. How awesome is that? So let's see how it works when you're in survival. You can see that my hotbar is completely empty, but I do have the blocks required in my inventory. Now, as long as I have the blocks in my inventory, I can just place them. So if I look down here and just walk around and hold down the button, there we go, it's just placing the blocks for me. And this will work in survival, but you will have noticed that this block oh. is highlighted orange. What that means is it's in the wrong block state. In other words, it's in the incorrect orientation. Oh. It should be looking up like this. 
If you see any pink blocks in the schematic, that means that you've placed a block that doesn't belong in the schematic. So you can leave it in or you can get rid of it, it's up to you. But if you place the wrong block in the wrong location in the schematic, it will restrict you if you're in easy place mode. But otherwise, you would place the block and the block would show up as red. And it will tell you in the schematic verifier that it has been incorrectly placed. So this easy place mode... Oh, hello, cow. Uh, yeah, this easy place mode basically restricts what blocks get placed where. But this issue only occurs on servers. In single player, it will actually place them in the correct orientation. It's only when you're on servers that it doesn't work. But how cool is this? It just pulls out exactly the blocks that you have in your inventory. If you don't have the block, it doesn't place it. But I only found out about this yesterday, and I can't believe I hadn't found it out sooner. And finally, I have one other awesome trick up my sleeve that you must know how to do when you're using Lightmatica. You're probably wondering how I'm getting this to work. Well, there is a setting that you can change. If you press M, go to Configuration Menu, go over to Generic, and then scroll down until you see Layer Mode Follows Player. Change this to True, and if you are in Single Layer Mode, the layers will follow you up and down. Now where this gets really useful is if you go to all below. Because then you can build from the bottom upwards. And the layers will follow you as you are going up. Well that is it for this tutorial video. I'll probably make a follow up video if I learn any other cool tricks while using Lightmatica. But anyway I really hope you enjoyed. If you did please hit the like button. And if you enjoyed it a lot and want to see more tutorials like this one, please subscribe. It would really make my day, and we're just above 500 now. So let's see if we can make it to 1,000. Once again, hope you enjoyed, and as always, I will see you in the next one. So cheers, and bye-bye.